Was anybody really genuinely surprised at, at the latter part of the transfer window when you heard the news that Harrison Ashby wanted to leave West Ham and wasn't going to sign a new deal? In fact, let me get it right. He didn't say he wanted to leave West Ham, just let it be known that he wasn't going to sign a new deal. Now, that news, unsurprising news, coincided with Newcastle declaring officially, unofficially, their interest in the player. Now, the move didn't happen, as you know. But when I say about surprise, the answer is no. You weren't surprised, were you? And I wasn't surprised. And the reason for that is that we've sort of got used to it. We've grown accustomed to it, if you like. And it's happened a few times. But I do think there are different reasons for each one. The obvious thing to say is David Moyes just won't play him. But I think there's a lot of factors at play here. And I do think that's the main one. But if we refer back to our first example, then, um, which I, I'm going to use as Jeremy Ngakia, then Moyes was playing him. In fact, not only was Moyes playing him, I think he was actually Moyes' chosen right back at, at the point of us wanting to keep him. David Moyes said he wanted to keep him, wanted to play him. Now, separate that for a moment from him, whether he's gone on and he's achieved anything in the game, because he really has. He's, he's not gone on and um, and sort of proven to be, you know, Cafu or, or something like that. I mean, the good one, obviously. Um, he's not proven to be that. Um, he's not even gone on proven to be Gary Neville, let's be fair. He's not really done anything at Watford, but separate that because it actually doesn't matter. What is important is that David Moyes wanted him. David Moyes wanted to keep him as a club. We wanted to keep him. We made three or four attempts uh, at improved transfer offers, and, and it didn't happen. It didn't work out. Uh, next one I want to bring your attention to is it's slightly different because people will use this. Josh Cullen. Josh Cullen didn't want to walk out. Josh Cullen wanted to stay at West Ham. Also, Josh Cullen by that time wasn't really a youngster. He was in his, his early 20s. <laughs> I, I say that's not a youngster. I wouldn't mind being in my early 20s, of course. And uh, so, you know, look, that, that was uh, slightly disappointing. Uh, also, the example of Sonny Perkins uh, and then Elise. And th th look, th there are others who who maybe the club didn't want to retain, but I, I just I just want to I just want to talk about the ones in particular that we wanted to keep and they said they want to leave. Because the easy thing is to say it's Moyes and, the, and there's another easy thing to say, well, maybe we didn't offer them enough wages. I think the truth is somewhere in the middle. Maybe there are other factors at play here. Um, David Moyes has been given a, a second chance, a second bite of the cherry with Harris and Ashby and I think it's really, really important that he doesn't that he uses that opportunity, let's put it that way, that he he takes the opportunity that's been given by default and uses the six months to convince Harrison Ashby that he has a future at West Ham. What do these players want? Well, one of two things. I want first team football or they want money. Um, possibly both. And that was the thing with Perkins. Perkins was the brightest academy prospect that we had. I did an interview with Tony Carr. I spoke to Tony Carr. Tony Carr said uh, that Kevin Keane, who's obviously one of our, uh, I think he's our under-18 coach, had said that Perkins and Elise were the best young players at the club. Well, they've both gone now. Some people said uh, Perkins wanted first-team football or the chance of first-team football. Uh, well, let's be fair, he's not been starting up front for Leeds, so it can't have just been that. And others said it was money. Now, here's what I find hard to believe in terms of the money. If we don't give these youngsters money, and if we're, because we're skimp, why have we just gone and blown £180 million on transfers? I would imagine if we can find, well, take Kera, for instance. We didn't intend on purchasing Kera, but if we can find £12 million down the back of the sofa to get a centre-back that we've not agreed to sign and hadn't planned to sign, we've signed from Paris Saint-Germain, who's on quite big wages, I'm pretty sure we can find an extra five to ten grand a week to sign a player. So I don't think it can be just that either. The Elise one was a little bit different because he wanted to leave. I think his, his heart was at West Ham, but he wanted to leave to play first team football. As I mentioned on numerous occasions, there were no set of circumstances where Elise was going to play. And I think Moyes could have done a lot better there. There was opportunity last season, towards the end of last season, when all the older centre-backs were injured, apart from Craig Dawson, he still didn't play the lad. Now, there is a mistrust, I think, from David Moyes about young centre-halves. I don't know if you remember, think back uh, to David Moyes' first stint at the club and Declan Rice. He read Declan Rice, the riot act. I can't remember the game. Declan Rice made a mistake, but actually thought 
Apple Arthur Masuaku in the same game made I think he made two major errors and Moyes didn't go after Masuaku. He went after Declan Rice. Maybe he thought it was character building, something like that. And I've always been convinced that it the reason we find Declan Rice is a midfielder is because Pellegrini came in and said, I'm not sure he's a centre back, he's a midfielder. David Moyes returns and you know, and there we we've got ourselves one of the best midfielders in the world. However, I think if David Moyes had stayed, I do think Rice would have made it. Because I just think if you are exceptional, and Moyes showed this with Bruni as well, if you are exceptional. In fact, we were after Yanazai. The more I think about it, Yanazai he brought through. I think he brought through Leon Osman. Um, I, what was the guy's name at Man United? Mashida, Makeda, I think that was his name. He will play young players if he thinks they're good enough. So I think Declan Rice would have made it. But I do think that Declan would have been um, a centre half at West Ham. I think right. See, rather than a, a central midfielder who's played two hundred games, if Moyes had stayed, we might have found that he was now a central defender who'd played one hundred and fifty games, something like that. No way I know if we. But at least he was never going to get played, so at least he left. But I think if it's just one player, then you you let it you sort of let it go, and it doesn't appear to be a factor. When it's numerous players, you think, hold on, we're hemorrhaging them here. So Ngakia we wanted to keep, Moyes wanted to keep, then we couldn't keep him, we just wouldn't wouldn't sign a new contract. I think okay as an isolated one, it's a little bit disappointing we can't hold on to our best young player as we thought he was then. Okay, fine. Then it happens again. I, I always say, you know, once is a shame, um, twice is a coincidence, three times is a trend. I don't mean just mean young players, I just mean in anything. And we've definitely got a trend on our hands here. And that, uh, basically West Ham is not perceived to be a really good place for young players to thrive. In essence, to coin quite a nasty phrase I'm going to use here, West Ham ain't the academy of football anymore. And, and that's a real shame. We can, we can write it on the website. We can, we can festoon the stadium in it. Right, if you walk out, out the tunnel on the pitch, it's, it's etched there, the academy of football. If you walk down the tunnel, the academy of football. Um, well, well, as you walk in through the turnstiles, it's up there. As I say, at Banners, the Academy of Football, but it's not, is it? Because young players don't see a path to the first team. And I do think that's a massive shame. So Perkins, I do think, was... It felt like a loss. Now, what, whenever I do these sort of videos, there will always be somebody that that turns around and says, oh, n name me name me, a pl name me a player that West Ham have let go and they've, they've done something. They've done something in the game. Um... And I understand that, but more or less, most of them who have left our academy have not gone on to do something. But sometimes you do get a useful one there. You know, Liam Ridgewell, for instance, was a really good example. We let him go, shouldn't really let him go. When I had a good career, um, we almost bought uh, the fella from Aston Villa House. We almost bought him back. John Terry left. We couldn't keep hold of him. Of course, there are, there are examples of it happening. Stanislas left, went on to have a good career. Leon Britton left, went on to have a good career. So it doesn't mean everybody that we produce for our academy has got to be a world beater. Sometimes they're just bloody useful in the squad. And there was something that really sort of occurred to me when I was watching the game against um, Chelsea the other day. Is I don't think Souffal had a good game. And I thought technically he was, he was quite poor. I thought he was a hindrance to our, uh, our counter-attack, basically. I thought he defended. I thought everybody defended, um, you know, really well. But aside from the, the sloppy goal with the goalkeeping and the mix-up with Souffal and, and, uh, and Kaira and the goalkeeper, I, I thought... For most of the game, Chelsea were on the offensive. We were we defensively played very, very well. And when you sit back and sit back that much, the counter-attack's really important. You've got to make sure you retain possession. last thing you want is someone be having sloppy technique and the ball comes back straight back at you. And that's what was happening. And I thought Souffal played really badly. And I, I couldn't help but think, well, Ashby, I feel, would have done a good job attacking there. I think he's got a really good cross, really good technique. I think he's a player. And I think for Newcastle to come in and want to sign him, um, not like Leeds signed Perkins. Leeds tried to sign Perkins, you know, like on a tribunal and, and sort of on on the sneak, if you like. Uh, Newcastle willing to pay a P. A P? <laughs> That's bad. They were willing to pay more than that. I can't be bothered to edit that out. Um, they, were, they were willing to pay a fee uh, for, for Ashby. Oh, dear. Um... Anyway, so they were going to give us money for him now. That shows how highly they that shows how highly they rate him. I will get over it. Excuse me. I'll compose myself now. Um, 
So clearly they think he's a Premier League footballer. Um, I think they see him as the long-term replacement to Trippier. Well, you know, that's, they're a... They're an ambitious club. If they can see his quality there, then um, then why can't we? And actually, I do think we can see his quality. I think David Moyes has already played him once this season in Europe. Uh, I think David Moyes likes him, and I think David Moyes wants to retain him. But what David Moyes has got to appreciate is um, that not everybody shares the... Every, I think everyone shares his vision, but not everyone shares the length of time that it should be achieved in. And David Moyes has got to hurry his vision up, you see. Because I think it's fine. If all you can do is add one player each season, then I think David Moyes can probably get away with the sort of the five-year plan. I think the moment you start splashing money, which is up there in the top five in Europe, of, or any club, in fact, world football, the moment you start spending 180 million and you buy players, well, not just one player, two players off PSG and stuff like that, I, th I think you just don't get away with this or we have to do it slowly. Well, you don't, not when you've got that sort of money. Um... And I, so I think when he looks at players that have ambition, Harrison Ashby probably doesn't want to hear that he's going to be the right back in four years' time. He probably wants to be the right back now. And it's not as if we have got a load of players banging on the door that can go and do that. Look, Johnson is a good utility player. I mean, he really is. He's going to play lots of games every season for West Ham, but I think that's what he'll be. I think he'll play some at centre-back, some at right-back, some at left-back, some at right-wing-back, some at left-wing-back. That's how it's going to be. And those players are invaluable. I mean, really, they take up a squad place. They take up one squad place and do the job of three players. Brilliant. But actually, as, as a first-choice exceptional right-back, you need to excel at something. You know, when I say excel... Just just something. Be really, really good at one thing. And I do think Ashby does. I think he's an exceptional. I think he travels the ball really well, an exceptional um, passer of the ball. And I'll tell you what, if Harrison Ashby play wherever Harrison Ashby plays his career, you'll get some, some goal of the month contenders, some goal of the season contenders out of him. He really strikes the ball well. So David Moyes got a chance now, and, and I often say on this channel um, about schmoozing. David Moyes, I've done several videos. David Moyes doesn't know how to schmooze a player. It's time to schmooze, Moisey, mate. It's time to schmooze. Um, and the schmooze should be, I'm going to use you. Let me prove to you. David Moyes doesn't like doing this. David Moyes doesn't like guaranteeing people places. David Moyes basically wants everybody to want West Ham. Well, not everybody does. And if people don't see their future, and particularly bearing in mind Harrison Aspie's dad, is a former professional footballer, maybe they need persuading. Maybe just maybe David Moyes needs to say, look, mate, you know, um, I'd love you to sign a contract, but I know you're not going to do that right now. Let me prove to you that I see you as part of these plans. Because actually, I look at the team, I look at the team next season, there's no way we've got 180 million to spend next season. There's really not. I mean, how can we? I don't know if we could financial fair play, but also just, I, I just don't think that's the way it's going to go. Um, I think if we do next season, maybe we got, I don't know, maybe we've got 80 million to spend or something like that. We've probably got more because I know the Declan Rice money, but forget about that for a second. It may well be that forgetting that we haven't got the, we haven't got the money to, to buy both fullback positions. We probably need to. Don't get me wrong, I think Emerson's fine, but I've never thought Emerson's a long-term answer. I never thought he's a long-term strategy in terms of our, our left back. Um, I don't think we've got the money out there to go and spend 30 million on a left back and 30 million on a right back and then, you know, go and sort out the situation in central midfield or whatever the case may be. I really don't think so. So actually bringing somebody through the academy is incredibly important. And also just giving those players hope in the academy that there is a path to the third, first team. And this is where we stand with it at the moment. Because whilst I think a bit of it is money, the 180 million spent has made me think maybe that's not the case. Because if we've got that sort of money, why wouldn't we just give the youngster a little bit more to retain him? I do wonder about the conversation that goes on with David Moyes, not just between the player and David Moyes, but the club and David Moyes. Something like this, which is, you know, Sonny, Sonny Perkins wants a new contract. David Moyes says, yeah, give him a new contract. The club go to him and he says, no, I want a bit more. Then the club say to David Moyes, uh, he wants another 10 grand. Maybe David Moyes says, no, I don't think so. He's not worth it. Or whatever, something like that. I just think there maybe should be a little bit more flexibility. Maybe, just maybe, Sonny Perkins goes on and does nothing in the game. Maybe Ngakia goes on and does nothing in the game. Maybe 
Elise goes on and does nothing in the game. Um, and maybe, just maybe, Harrison Ashby goes on and does nothing in the game. But I'm, I'm not entirely sure about all this. I'm really not. And I think you can't keep doing it. And I think it's important that you find out. Because it was, it'd be nice to find out at West Ham whether they're good enough or not. And I know you can't always do it, but let's be fair, we've been losing anyway. Uh, Supal's not been playing well this season. And I know Ashby's had a little injury and all the rest of it, so it's not you know easy to make the comparison. Um, but wouldn't it have been nice last season if when everybody was injured, and I mean all the defenders, we, again, we were losing games anyway, and Craig Dawson was there with his broken nose and his, uh, whatever it was, sprained ankle, still playing for it, but there were no other centre-backs. Wouldn't it have been nice if David Moyes just looked at Elise over two or three games? He might not have made it, but we would have had a chance to look at him. And I do think it's really important that he now gives, sends out the right messages to these players. Because otherwise, I look at it and I think, what is the point in running the academy? I think the thing costs five to ten million a year to run. Um, now, let's be fair, I think, you know, obviously selling Grady and Garner, you know, pays for that for three or four years. But you can't keep relying on that. And let's be fair, that wouldn't have happened. Under David, under David Moyes, the whole Dean Garner thing. And to be fair, we got really good money for Dean Garner, didn't we? Let's, let's be honest with that one. Um, but it's a worry. It's a worry. And it doesn't just hinder us in terms of players leaving us where it really hinders us. And I think this is maybe where we won't feel the benefit of it. David Moyes might look at the, the under-18s, might look at the under-21s and think, well, there's no one absolutely brilliant there. Well, maybe that's the point. Maybe there would be someone brilliant there if West Ham was seen once again as the Academy of Football rather than just being a slogan. Because that is all it is. It's just become a slogan. Maybe, just maybe, if you we had that reputation back, the best youngsters, when they're 13, 14, looking to sign with clubs, looking to go and train with clubs, maybe West Ham might be an option. Because I'll tell you what, at the moment you'd look at almost any other club and you'd think you'd get a chance there. We'd get a chance to play. At West Ham, you just don't. So Moisey needs to schmooze. Moisey needs to back his ideas up. Moisey needs to um, needs to do something. The irony is a lot of players, a lot of managers say that they won't pick youngsters because no one gets any time in the game anymore. A manager will say, well, I can lose my job in six months. I don't, you know, managers don't get long anymore. I haven't got, I haven't got time. To bloody youngster who I might not see the benefit for a couple of years. And here's the irony. The one manager in the whole league who has had patience, who has had time, who has had the support of the club and an infrastructure to try and build something in his own vision is David Moyes.